Hello YouTube, so join me as I am now testing the auto leveling on my Cyclone PCB printed on the Anet PCB factory. What it's doing now is that's a bit of copper clad and it's got um, basically what amounts to a switch on the spindle, spindle for the Dremel and it is mapping out the surface of that PCB because when it's milled it'll have to be pretty level because you're only going very shallow so it's just a test at the moment um, I'm going to do a detailed sort of what I found on this hopefully but in the meantime um, this is fully printed that's a Dremel 3000 I'd lying around uh, it's printed at 50% infill with one mil at least thick sides these take about 10 hours each something like that would take about two or three hours two or three hours, quite a long time. All the cogs are uh, printed. That's just threaded rod. This is not my idea, this is a guy called Carlos and I'll put a link in the description. This is just plywood iron in the shed um, for a base and uh, this is designed to hold the um, board. I've made it wider than the stock board. Uh, these are just smooth rods. Uh, issues I have with it so far, just getting to learn uh, B, C and C and gerbil. I'm using gerbil 1.1 uh, which has a whole series of codes instead of descriptions and uh, it uses things like, it doesn't show you what the um, <clears throat> variable is, it just gives you a list of those and you have to know what they are and set them according to the list, it's all on their wiki. Um, so yeah, just getting the direction right and the homing right, testing out the switch. Um, for some reason, you've got these two sets of variables. One is uh, work position, W pass, which you can zero after homing. M pass is zeroed after homing, but it's zeroed to this point up here. And uh, you've got to remember that you're, you're guiding the spindle, but the spindle's fixed, so the Y position's going the opposite to the way you think it should be. So when it's homed, it's actually at a maximum of uh, negative. It doesn't matter, but it's just annoying. That's one thing I've found so far. So this is a, an Arduino Uno. Printed a little case for it to stop the dust getting in it, because it's going to be metal dust. And they used to put them under here, on the plan, but I thought that was a bad idea. So I printed a little case for it, um, with a fan on it, to create some positive pressure. There's not too many holes, so that hopefully it blows the air out so dust don't get into it. Um, it's just an Arduino Uno running Gerbil 1.1, or Gerbil 1.1, you can see it flashing away in there. With a uh, Protonier CNC uh, board, they make them, get them on eBay for, a, I don't know, not even a tenner. Uh, with stepper drivers, and... Um, that's a version 2 board. So what that's got is it's got the uh, X, Y and Z motors on the stepper motor pins as usual. And then it's got uh, limit switches, I've actually got it buttoned up at the moment but I'll do a bit more on that. It's got the limit switches so you've got X, Y and Z limit switches and they're all parallel together so that it can have stops on each end. Uh, I've just got one on the home. That isn't in the plan I did that because it wasn't easy to home it without that, that's a Z on the Z Max. So um, yeah, so it's got X, Y and Z limits and then on A5, pin A5, it's got these two wires and I've pulled all of these up, I haven't relied on the internal pull up resistors, I've pulled them all up to the 5 volt line with a 4.4K7 ohm resistor <coughs> just to hold the pin high. So basically that pin held high until it contacts the ground which is on the copper clad and that is the probe switch. Um, so yeah, issues I've had with it are that the probe switch, sorry the Z limit switch out the box is actually on the stepper um, spindle enable pin because I initially put it on the Z pin and it did nothing. So I haven't changed the firmware, just uh, if you're going to put a Z switch on it put it on the step enable pins on the Protonier board. The other issues I've had with it are the, uh, very limited really, The that's just M8 threaded bar. I've got some WD-40 uh, dry silicone spray that I put on there 
because obviously it's going to get covered in dust and I don't want it turning into paste and then getting in the bearings and screwing it out so this is like a dry PTFE spray but it's got springs, it's got anti-backlash uh, springs inside uh, in there there's two nuts and a spring that hold together to stop it from backlashing and so you've got to have a spring over this threaded bar basically held each end with washers and what was happening was it was it was going along and then it was getting stuck and then kicking and then going along and getting stuck and then catching up and then going along and catching up and what it was was that the spring was slipping through the washer so the tension was building on the spring to the point where it got enough that it slipped through the washer and then held it back and then it pulled it so I had to print some really tight washers to go in front of the spring that seems to have solved it and an example is there so that's what it's got basically so what was happening is the spring was going inside the washer uh, lock nuts on the end um, so yeah at the moment I've just uh, got to the stage of testing and to be honest I don't know how to use BCNC I'm making up as I go along um, you have to unlock it each time you start it uh, then you have to home it uh, I'll just quickly show you so yeah, this is gerbil, and uh, you just uh, it's very, very limited interface. It's very good, but it's very limited interface. So there's all the variables, and you've got to have a list like that, or the wiki, to know what they mean. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but once you've got it set up, it's okay. So you can see immediately things like, well, um, uh, where are we? Oh, God, these are, these are feed rates. It works on 3,200 or 32,000, not 1,600. So those are X, Y, and Z feed rates, uh, or steps per millimetre, I should say. These are feed rates, and then it's you know you got things like inverting the axes. Well, you know whatever you put, that's what it will do. Little table. So yeah, that's uh, to come. A bit more of a video on that, hopefully. And in the meantime, I've actually got the BL Touch on the uh, on the little uh, homemade uh, Atom X which is working fine. Um, I did a video but I didn't upload it. Um, but the only problem is, because I've got the BL Touch, I've lost half the work area more or less. So I've had to buy some more longer rods. Uh, it's working fine, it printed stuff out for the PCB uh, um, maker, part helper parts, it takes quite a long time. But um, yeah, once I've got those on, I'll do a video showing how to set that up. I'll put marlin on it now, because to get the BL Touch working, I found it really a headache with the Repetier firmware. So I put marlin on it, configured marlin, got the BL Touch working. Um, so that's been sitting there for a while now, not doing a lot, so I'll get that back up and running. Hope you're all well, and I'll see you soon. Cheers, bye.